Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant-Based Bride, back again with another video. And this week's video is going to be another Bujo Babble episode. In these Bujo Babble episodes, I like to take a question or an idea that has to do with bullet journaling and explore it more in depth while simultaneously setting up a spread in my bullet journal. You can think of them as a visual podcast. So recently in my Patreon squad Discord server, some of my patrons and I were having a discussion about using multiple bullet journals rather than consolidating everything into a single notebook. This split can look very different depending on the person. Some people like to have a personal bullet journal and a work bullet journal. Some people like to have their monthly, weekly, daily pages in a single bullet journal and keep their collections in another. Some people like to have their work and personal bullet journal together and then have a separate bujo for a specific hobby like reading or sewing. And the question I suppose is this, is having multiple bullet journals antithetical to the core purpose of a bullet journal? And does it matter either way? If you've been watching my videos for a while or seen any of my past Bujo Babble videos, I have a feeling that you already know what my opinion is going to be. Regardless, I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic, whether you've ever split up your bullet journal into multiple notebooks, what those notebooks contained, how you found it, or just your thoughts on splitting up your bullet journal in general. So back to my opinion on the matter, since this is my channel after all. So let's answer that first question first. Is the act of splitting the content of your bullet journal into more than one notebook in opposition at its core to the purpose of a bullet journal? Before we answer this, we have to know what the purpose of a bullet journal is anyway. And for this, I have always and will always go back to Ryder Carroll, the creator of the system. While bullet journals have evolved since becoming part of the wider public consciousness, the concept itself originated in Ryder Carroll's brain. And so I tend to think of him as the best source for information about the system, especially on a theoretical level. So what does Ryder Carroll say about the purpose of a bullet journal? From what I've seen, he likes to say that the purpose of a bullet journal is to track your past, order your present, and plan your future. Well, that was pretty straightforward. <laughs> and it doesn't seem to me like having information that could potentially be stored in a single notebook spread out among multiple is in and of itself in opposition to that purpose. In my mind, the only way that having multiple bullet journals could oppose the core purpose of a bullet journal would be if having multiple bullet journals makes them more inconvenient to use and leads you to not in fact use your bullet journals to track your past, order your present, and plan your future. And whether or not splitting your bullet journal up will make things harder or easier is going to completely depend on you. Your wants, needs, learning style, personality, lifestyle, etc. I won't list all the potential ways that having multiple journals could improve or impede your use of the bullet journaling system. I'm sure you know for yourself whether it's something that could potentially help or hurt. Or if you don't, the best way to find out would be to just try it. Probably the easiest example of how keeping everything consolidated in a single bullet journal is beneficial would be the simple fact that everything you need to keep your life afloat exists in a single notebook that you can take with you everywhere. For a lot of people, this is one of the main benefits of this system in their life. And of course, when you begin to split things up into multiple notebooks, it becomes less portable, which for some people could be a big problem. And for others like myself who work from home and barely ever leave the house, it's not really an obstacle. Of course, if portability is an issue, then this could factor into how you choose to split up your bullet journal, if you did in fact want to. So maybe you choose to have a personal bullet journal and a work bullet journal, and you leave your personal bullet journal at home and only take your work bullet journal with you each day. You could have a simple spread at the back of your work bullet journal where you can jot down anything that needs to go into your personal bullet journal when you get home. And when you get home from work, you can take five minutes to migrate those from your work bullet journal into your personal bullet journal. Or maybe you want to have one bullet journal for all of your day-to-day -day life, work, and personal combined, but you want to create a separate bujo for a hobby that you only tend to do from home, like, say, sewing. It's probably not a big deal if you don't bring your sewing bullet journal with you to the grocery store. 
But again, it's up to you whether having multiple journals is more practical and feels more organized, or ends up feeling less practical and more hectic. For some people, splitting their bullet journal into more than a single notebook is going to lead to them stopping bullet journaling altogether. And while it's totally fine to take a break from bullet journaling when and if you need it, if it feels more like it's impeding you from doing something you would like to do or feel you would benefit from, then maybe it's not the right solution for you. I've personally never split my bullet journal up into multiple notebooks. I've only ever had one single notebook at a time that contains all of my personal life and all of my work life and all of my other hobbies and thoughts in one single place. But as I mentioned, I work from home and my work is not the confidential type. I've spoken to a number of people whose jobs require confidentiality, and for that reason alone, they are obligated to separate their work bullet journal from their personal bullet journal. And I don't think there's anything about that that defeats the purpose of the bullet journal system. This topic has actually come at a great time because I'm currently planning on starting a separate bullet journal to use through 2021 as a reading journal. As you all know, I got much more into reading in 2020, going back to my roots as a bookworm. And while I have had reading spreads in my bullet journal this year, they've been pretty rudimentary. And I've started to think that it would be lots of fun to have a bullet journal dedicated to reading, where I can create a bunch of spreads about books that I've read, statistics of my reading, trends in my reading or in the book industry at large, favorite quotes, etc, etc. I like the idea of being able to have all of these more complex spreads without worrying about finishing a notebook and moving into a new one, leaving all of those spreads behind. For now, that's the only kind of split that I'm looking for. I'm still happy to have my collections and my work and my personal day-to-day -day stuff all in a single notebook. But who's to say that that opinion will never change over the years? As you'll know if you've watched my first bullet journal flip through video, which I'll link in the description box if you're interested, my bullet journal has changed a whole lot since I started back in 2014. And I'm sure it will look and function very differently after another six years than it does today. And that's okay, because as we change as people, as our lives change, so does what we need from our bullet journal. And that brings me to the second question. Does it matter? <laughs> Does it matter if splitting your bullet journal up into two or three or ten notebooks is not in keeping with the spirit of a bullet journal as writer Carol envisioned it? And in my opinion, no, it doesn't matter. As I've said over and over and over again on this channel, and I will not stop saying it, a bullet journal is for the individual, and it will be different from person to person. And that is the whole point. It doesn't serve anyone to follow a strict set of rules according to what someone else says is most efficient or productive if those rules don't actually work for that person. Productivity and efficiency and effectiveness aren't the same for everyone. We have different learning styles and lifestyles, different schedules, families, histories, brains, interests, wants, and needs. It would honestly be a little strange if every single one of us in our endless diversity were able to use an exact carbon copy of Ryder Carroll's system and it be efficient for us. So in conclusion, do whatever the heck you want. <laughs> if you want everything in a single bullet journal, go for it. If you want to split it up into two separate notebooks, or maybe three, or maybe four, in such a way that works for you and your life, then have at it. And another thing, you are allowed to split things up for a few months or a few years and then go back to a single notebook for a few months or a few years and then split things up again in a different way. There is no rule that says your version of the system has to look identical over time. I'll be trying splitting my reading spreads out of my regular bullet journal in 2021, and I'll be sure to let y'all know how I like it. Bullet journaling is a modular system at its core, and that modular system can be contained within a single notebook, or it can be made up of multiple. Don't let anyone tell you that you don't have a bullet journal just because you use multiple notebooks to complete your system. No one else can define it for you. Only you can do that. I hope this episode of Bujo Babble was interesting and helpful in some way. As I mentioned, I would love to know your thoughts on this topic. Have you ever split up your bullet journal? And if so, I would love to know how you split it up and how you found it. 
Let me know in the comments if there's another topic you'd like me to cover in a future Bujo Babble episode. Perfectionism within the bullet journaling community is one that I've had on my mind for a while and I want to cover, but let me know if there's anything else you'd like to hear my thoughts on. Before I go, I want to take a moment to thank my patrons for their support. Extra special thanks to our newest patrons, Daisy, Rose, Simone, Nikolai, Valerie, Stephanie, Juanita, and Noha. Welcome all of you to the squad. We are so excited to have you. If you at home want to join the squad, feel free. There's a link in the card and in the description box down below. And you can be part of these discussions when they just pop up organically and uh, hear my thoughts before anyone else does. And with that, I'm going to get going. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing the process of creating this bonus quote page in my October spreads. Of course, all of the supplies I used will be linked in the description box below. As always, be sure to let me know in a comment if I forgot something. And with that, I'm going to get going. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you really soon in my next one. Bye, friends. If you're looking for something else to watch, I recommend you check out this video or this video.